G'day. A friend of mine who I uh, met through uh, scouting many, many years ago uh, came in with a bandsaw bracket. Um, oh, sorry, a bracket from a bandsaw. Uh, it had just about fallen apart and asked whether I could make up a new one. Um, I've managed to do that, but uh, they didn't have a, they didn't come without a few problems. So uh, this video is is uh, about the steps I went through to to make that. Um, I made a few enhancements to it. The, the original one didn't have a, a, a brass bush for the little uh, gear to run in. Um, and uh, the, the grub screw that tightened on the, um, the, what would you call it, the rod that it, it slides on, um, was uh, just steel on steel and that didn't work too well. So I've put a little brass tip on the, on the screw. But other than that, uh, it seems to have worked out quite nicely. This is the bracket. Uh, it's in pretty poor shape. It's a zinc die cast bracket and uh, well depending on who makes them sometimes they can last but uh, if, the, if the composition in the pot isn't quite right or they're not properly treated afterwards um, they just fall apart and as you can see this one has. The parts go on like that I believe and that's, that's all I've got. Um, there's a little bit missing off here. There's a little bit missing off here. Um, be nice if there was more, but there's not. So, I guess to start with, when doing something like this, you need to measure up and make sure you've got a bit of material that will will suit. And I've got a piece here somewhere, there, you are. and I've started marking it up. Um, this is just a chunk of aluminium I had sitting around the place. Uh, it'll do quite nicely to replace the, the zinc. Um, the nice thing about the aluminium too is if it, later on it needs to be repaired or, or is worn a bit, I can weld that, whereas the zinc, uh, it's, it's basically a throwaway part. So I started by marking out the position of this boss on the back here. Um, that's really going to be, well, it's, it's directly underneath the bore, but that's really going to be the sort of the defining feature uh, I now need to mill down that much to bring it to that surface. This strip here is, is surplus requirements. I'm not sure what has to happen here yet because there's a, um, a gear that is meant to sit here and crank a shaft back and forwards. Uh, I think it's the wrong gear. It's, it's certainly not the right gear shaft, so I might have to make up a new gear as well. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave that a bit long. I've squared up my block, or at least I've squared it up on uh, one, two, three, four sides. This side is still saw cut. doesn't worry me because I'm going to be machining that off in a moment anyway. The key feature on this part is the uh, hole for the circular rack to go through. So this is a long series drill. Uh, and I'm about to drill through the block uh, and take it out to the 22 millimeter size that it, it needs to be. The reason I've got it set up like this is just so that I can see when the, the drill bit breaks through and not drilling to any of my hardware. I could put this in the vise, um, but I've just as likely to, to, to drill into the vise if I'm not careful. So uh, I've got this set up like this, uh, that's been trammed up, this is at right angles to it, these are holding it in that way and that way, there's a parallel under here to just lift it up and that should all be fine. Uh, so I'll drill down with this drill which is I think is about a 5mm uh, and then take that out to probably something like uh, 16 or 17 and then come in with the boring head to take that down to, to size. don't know how easy it is to see here but I'm down around about the 50 millimeter depth mark, and as you can see, the chips are, for, from the aluminium are packing up around the flutes of the drill, and they're not ejecting very easily at all. And so what I'm finding is I'm having to stop every five, uh, 10 if I'm feeling really brave, but generally five millimeters or so, back the drill out, and knock these chips out. Uh, the other possibility, if I don't do that, of course, is that it'll jam up, break the drill, and all the rest of the stuff. So. Just, just remember when you're drilling holes over, say, about five drill diameters, um, you're going to have to back that drill out. Uh, I, I, I'm using a lot of uh, WD-40 as a lubricant but um, to, to try and stop the chips building up. But regardless of what, uh, what material you're drilling, uh, 
you will you, uh, a, a twist drill like this gets less efficient at, at getting the chips out uh, as you go. Uh, I was going to bore this hole out but I thought that's a lot of mucking around for a hole which basically just has to have uh, a piece of um, rod sliding through it and it's not even a, a, a terribly precision piece of uh, stuff either. So what I've done is I've drilled it and I'm now going to run a ream down there. Now this is an expanding reamer. For people who haven't seen them, uh, the way they work is they've got a, you might be able to just see a slot there, which has actually got a bit of a taper on it. These cutting blades have got a, an opposite taper, so as you wind these two nuts up, the blade goes up the the the, uh, the slope, and so you get a, a, an ex a, you know, a range of sizes out of these things. I remember bringing up a um, a knowledgeable person about these things that I'm thinking about buying some adjustable reamers and their answer the first thing they said was don't they're a lot of trouble they are but they do uh, mean that you don't have to carry a whole bunch of fixed reamers and certainly some of these larger sizes I, I rarely use and can't afford however there is a, a, an interesting thing that comes with expanding reamers or you can buy for them and that's a thing called a pilot what you do is you take that bottom nut off and you screw that on and what that allows you to do is when you've got this sitting in the top of the hole and this in the bottom you can slide that conical section up to nest in the bottom of the hole and that helps keep it centralized because one of the problems with these things particularly when you're starting is they'll chatter on you this is why i was so keen to get that hole in i've run the uh, the shaft that's going to, to run in there through and supported that on two, um, well these are actually from a hole down set, but they're the same height. Um, and then I've swiveled my vice, my vice around so that I get the axis of this um, shaft parallel with the direction of travel. Now that means when I go to machine the little block on the back here, I'm going to have that block in line with this and centred on this. And that's rather important because that way it means that when this gets bolted in, it doesn't actually you know, try to head off sideways or something like that. To indicate on a round bit of stock like that is sometimes difficult. So what I've done is I've just put a, a parallel uh, either on, on this side, indicated off that, put it over there, indicated off that, and then I've used that to, to find my centre. Uh, that's the, um, um, the non-square side, and so I've just got a bit of rod in there. Uh, using the square side against the fixed jaw to, to locate it. So that should give me enough of a location so I can come in confidently and put that little square block on the back of the, of the part. I may have given the impression earlier that this is the most important feature on the, uh, on the part. Um, it's not, but the important thing about it is that it helps define where this plane is, which is an important feature. And so uh, while I've got this set up, I've put some um, centre drills in the three holes. So basically the, the three mounting holes, plus the two here for the adjuster. And that'll give me um, something to work on so that I, I've, I've got a... You know, I can fit this around, I can machine bits off, but I, I, I've got a... Uh, you know, these, these positions are marked. Anyway, that's it for this side of the, um, the part. What I'm now going to do is flip it over and start doing some of these sorts of features here. Things have changed a little since uh, you last saw this. Um, I've hogged a whole bunch of material out uh, from the sides, from the top, from in here. Uh, the only reason that that's still sitting there is that to drive this up and down there's a gear. Uh, and I've, so I need to work out where the gear is and where the centre is so I can, I can work out where to pop a, a hole through there. Uh, I'll put a, probably put something like a brass bush in there and then I'll just trim this back down to uh, a reasonable size. Um, this is one of the things missing off this part, but that was, was sitting somewhere like that. Well, not this one. I think this is actually a, a ring in because it's got a bit of slop in it. Um, and the, the gear teeth don't actually mesh properly, so I'll have to make up a new one of these. Most of this was pretty dull, uh, including the cutter. If ever you get poor surface finish, one of the first things you need to look at is your cutter, uh, which could be blunt. Aluminium in particular. Uh, some of the grades aren't all that wonderful for machining anyway. They, they don't machine well, but um, that's certainly blunt cutter in there, I think. 
I switched to a uh, high helix aluminium cutter. This was sent to me by a friend of mine, Bob, over in uh, Western Australia. And uh, the reason I got it, it's a, it's a perfectly good cutter, was that uh, his milling machine won't take a 22 millimeter diameter cutter. And so he said, well, it's no good to me. Would you like it? Every so often I haul it out when I'm doing uh, deep pocketing and, and things like that, the aluminium. And it's a wonderful thing because it really helps get those, those chips out. I'm just about to part off the, the pinion gear that I've made up. Um, usually when I make gears, they're big enough that you put a shaft on them. Uh, and so there's a keyway or something like that. But this one here I've made out of solid. Uh, it just means there's one less thing to go wrong. It's small enough that it's, it's inch diameter stock that it doesn't really matter too much. It's, it's, yeah, there's a little bit of material that's uh, wasted but not an enormous amount. Uh, I'll part that off and dress the, the, the front up. This one's got 28 teeth on it. Uh, this one's got 26. Um, but they're about the same OD. So I d I'm not sure what this one was. It, it nearly meshes, but then again, it nearly meshes in the rack too. So I'm hoping that once I part this off, I'll try it in the rack and it'll work quite nicely. I've drilled and tapped the back out. This is where there's a, uh, a locking screw to, uh, sorry, a, um, a grub screw to apply pressure to the flat on the shaft plus the locking screw. Um, now that was just a plain grub screw in there and I was a bit of a concern that would gr uh, grab. So. I went and um, put a brass tip in this uh, set screw and thanks to uh, Neil at uh, Machining and Microwaves uh, for, the, for reminding me that uh, you can do this. Um, so that'll come in and that'll push on the steel, uh, less, less grabbing I hope less burrs and I may have to run a file over the flat of the thing. I also made a little half nut, I uh, just took a, uh, a normal nut, uh, put a locking nut behind it and, and faced that off so that that will uh, go in there, that can be adjusted up and then uh, basically locked in place. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, this main, the, the previous bracket may not have lasted all that well was that, that came loose and clatter around all that sort of thing. Um, now I need to shorten that off, take that out to uh, I think of about 14 millimeters. I'm gonna put a brass bush in there for my gear. Um, that, and uh, then I just need to trim off a few bits and pieces. That has to come back. These corners have to come off. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, other material has to come off. So this is the finished article. Um, I've given it a bit of a, a linish to try and get the corners down. I, I did a, a flat run across there, wasn't too happy. Um, hanging on to this thing to get these final fillets on bit awkward and as you can see I had a cutter slip there which is a bit of a nuisance uh, but other than that I think it's it's quite good so uh, this now adjusts up nicely uh, locks it and then we'll I haven't got the handle here to, to do the rack and pinion thing but that'll that'll work so uh, thanks for watching uh, and uh, please spread the word